Stephen, how's your squad looking for this one in terms of anyone back from Saturday? Um, Alfredo's obviously uh, available. Um, Scotty Arfield will train this morning, so we're, we're hoping that he'll come through and, and be available for us. Um, Ryan Jack's still a, a big doubt, um, but he'll do some, some work today. Um, he won't do the full session, but he'll do some work and then we'll assess him uh, after that. Given it's, it's obviously a big, a big cup day, would you, would you risk Ryan? If, if he's not 100% ready, if you feel, feel you've got the options if he's not? I think, I think I'd, I'd play Ryan Jack if he wasn't 100%, um, but I wouldn't risk him in terms of his body and um, creating further damage to where he's going to miss or have a longer period of time out of the game. I, I definitely wouldn't do that, but if Jacko says to me, look, I'm not perfect, but I'm prepared to pull through and, and, and have a go, he's certainly one that um, I'd, I'd probably go with because uh, he's a winner, he's a fighter, and he, he's certainly someone who I trust out there. So. Um, we'll, we'll see how he goes today. Is Alfredo champing at the bit after sitting, sitting on the bench for a couple of weeks? Yeah, on the evidence of yesterday's session, yes, he looked very sharp. Um, he doesn't like missing football matches, he doesn't like missing training, so I, I'm sure he is. Um, and it is a, a nice boost for everyone to have him back because, you know, obviously the weekend's performance, certainly in the final third, yeah, we didn't show enough. Do you feel, do the players, and do, you, do you feel you've missed him in these last two games? I think you always miss Alfredo Morelos. I think the form he's in, you know, he's obviously the, the leading scorer. Um, he's in incredible form. Uh, obviously, we've had situations with suspensions uh, throughout the season, which are not helpful to him, to us, um, or to the club. So um, it's important we get him on the pitch as much as we can because he's a hell of a threat and he certainly makes us a lot stronger. You were obviously very honest about your performance at the weekend. What have you seen from the players since then? Uh, I think they were very frustrated in the dressing room, they were very down. Uh, I think the good thing about this group of players is they know. Um, they know when they're not at it, at it. They've set themselves standards in certain games and this season that they've met. Um, and I think they know, even before I came into the dressing room after the game, that they'd let themselves down. And It's my job to just remind them of them standards and um, that's what we did. We, we, we've been honest with each other since, since the game. Um, and they know where they've gone wrong. So there's another opportunity and another chance to, to put that right on Wednesday night. I think the the task will be similar in many ways. Um, you know, we know Steve Clark will come with a game plan. We know he'll be organised. Um, he's had joy here before. So it's it, it's another great opportunity for the players. But um, what's important is we focus on ourselves and we try and at levels that we're we're happy with and, and satisfied with. If we do, it gives us a better chance of winning. Is there plenty you can learn from coming up against such an organised side? Well, we have learned. Um, we, we've had situations very similar to St Johnson before and the reactions being very good. Um, I think St Johnson wasn't just a problem in the 90 minutes. I think, um, you know, having looked back at the week leading into it, um, there's certain things that, you know, didn't really look right. It doesn't help when you have four or five players missing that are normally in your 11. Um, but I think the week's training leading into it, I didn't see a hungry team. I didn't see a team with the right mentality to, to you know, to go and um, embrace the challenge that St. Johnson brought. I think we, we went in with a bit of ego and just thought we could turn up and you know, we got found out. How so, big a concern is that when you've got players that are playing in front of 50,000 people that maybe aren't showing the, the, the desire or the hunger that you want? Well, it is a concern and, you know, this is this doesn't happen very often. Um, normally at home, we're, we're very strong and, you know, our record, if you take St. Johnson out of the equation, pretty strong at home. Um, so you're hoping this is not going to be a regular thing. Um, but I've told the players in, in, in a very honest and, and, and truthful way that that's not acceptable. If you're the Rangers player, you have to accept the challenge. You have to ex expect teams to come here and not make it easy for you. And, um, that's what Tommy did, and uh, credit to St. Johnson, they got out of it what they wanted, we never. Stephen, how did the players react to your brutal honesty, like you came out at the weekend? Um, yeah, on evidence of what's gone before, um, I don't think it was brutal. I think it was honest. I think probably 99 out of 100 managers are probably telling the same thing if they see what I seen on, on Saturday. Um, Maybe I put it across in a more honest and, and truthful way, but I'm not going to change. Um, I don't want to lie to the players or mislead them or tell them stuff that I don't believe in. Um, and the reaction can't be for me, it's got to be for the fans and the club. You know, 
Um, St. Johnson had 100, 150 supporters at that game. We had 49, 50,000. Um, they, they, they're the ones who deserve the standards and the level of performance. Um, it's my job to just tell the players and and be truthful and honest with them. And that's the way I do it. Has that approach got to be that way? You're a club this size. If you can't sort of deal with that sort of you know pressure put on you to perform every week, then you know is, is that the message that you might not be here for? Um, it's not a threat. I'm not going to th sit here and threaten my players. I've got a lot of belief and trust in these players. I, I love them to bits, and they've they've gone to places for me and, and for the team and the fans on on many occasions where they've they've gone above and beyond. Um, but they've been heavily praised for that, and that's what I do. I'm not one of these managers that's just permanently in the faces. Um, but there has got to be times when you tell players certain things, and um, you, you give them the evidence, and sometimes. It hurts players uh, in the short term, but you're hoping in the long term it, it benefits them first and foremost, and then it benefits the team. And I suppose that's what management's about. That's how I, li I liked it, and that's what I benefited from. So um, that's what I believe in. Do you expect a reaction in one in terms of seeing that, that commitment, that, that enthusiasm that perhaps was missing at the start of it? It's not so much a reaction. I expect a level of performance at home. Um, I expect teams to to come to Ibrox and, and feel Rangers first and foremost. Um, I want it to be a difficult place to come. Um, so it's more going back to what we tried to put in place at the beginning in terms of standards and how we need to play and how it needs to look as, as a Rangers player and a Rangers team when, when players, when opposition come to, to Ibrox. Um, at the weekend, um, I didn't see a, a proper Rangers team with the right mentality and I didn't see individuals really going above and beyond for the right result. Um, that was the concern for me. Stephen, one of the interviews at the weekend you said perhaps that some players were getting a bit too comfortable in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is and how do you aim to address that? Um, I speak to them individuals, um, I tell them and if I see anyone getting comfortable or think they can just walk into the team and stay in the team, I'll remove them. Hmm. How, how does that develop within a player then? Yeah, I just think sometimes you you know you can just you start going to cruise control and um, you get a bit complacent. You know these players are human beings. Uh, I've done it myself. I've had dips in form. I've had times when I've probably gone in a bit complacent myself. I think it's only normal. Um, it's my job to maybe spot it before it happens and we get performances like St. Johnson and. Um, but I think in the main we've got a, a fantastic group of players here, uh, players who are desperate for success. Um, but going back to it again, um, we are inexperienced in terms of winning. We are a new group. There's been a lot of change. Um, so you know, even though we all won it yesterday, we we might have to be a bit more, a bit more patient. I know you didn't start the weekend. So maybe unfair, but in terms of the criticism, wasn't directed at you, but. How do you think the dressing room as a whole takes on these comments? Um, well, in my career, I've, I've worked with managers that are they're black and white, or, or maybe they, they sort of work their way around the truth, but I know what one I'd take every single day. You work under certain managers that, you know, they, they sort of twitter around the truth that it turns, it turns out to be a lie. So I'd take black and white truth all day. Uh, the gaff has been fair with the players all season, certainly with me. I've, I, know where, I know where I've stood from, from day one. I think we spoke about that on, on previous occasions, but uh, in terms of reactions, I thought I thought we got a big reaction in training yesterday, which um, which is, is the start we certainly need. But uh, you know, actions speak louder than words. Uh, words, sorry. So we'll want to see that big reaction tomorrow. If I can say there've been a, a few rockets this season, is it time running out now to start reacting to that? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think we've bounced back from adversity really well this year. Uh, throughout the season, when we have had a poor result, we've went on a run. But you know, we can't we can't have too many more adversities because it's it's going to slip away fast. Given the Celtic's advantage at the top of the table now, does tomorrow night's <coughs> game have a bit more pressure riding on it? Just you know, in terms of maybe your last chance of, of claiming a trophy if Celtic won. Uh, well, in my mind, it's a, it's the biggest it's biggest game of the season so far. It's. Um, it's a competition we're still in. It's a competition we're still going to try and win, and uh, we've only got four games left to try and win it. And uh, you know, come on, that's the, the next hurdle to go through. Stephen, you, just, you spoke about Graham Dons last week. Yeah. Can you just give us a bit of a, a sort of longer explanation of what's happened with his injury update? Yeah, yeah, he had a, a setback. Um, I'm not sure exactly what date it was, but it was a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, 
because he was doing really well and moving along really nicely. Um, he's had a bit of a setback. Um, we're hoping it's not a, a big setback, so he's back out with the physios working and again, um, he's just had to reset and he'll go through a process now to try and build up to, to training with the team. Um, but in terms of when he'll be back and stuff, it's very difficult to, to give a date or a time um, because it has been a frustrating injury for Graham uh, and, and for us because we've been desperate to get him back involved. Um, you know, and you can see in, in, in the work that Graham's put in in the gym uh, with the medical department and um, he, he's done everything he can to try and get around the team even though uh, he hasn't been fit. So the player's desperate to get back, we, we're desperate to have him back. So it's been a bit of, of a frustrating one for everyone, but fingers crossed this time um, he can push on now and, and hopefully within weeks he can be back with the team. It's one of the ones that you, you need to really be careful to get it fixed properly last time. I think you said that he might have been rushed back early on the season. He came back a bit quicker than he might have. Um, I, I think that's always the easy answer is to maybe you know point your fingers at a physio or a medical department to say oh they rushed them and, and blah 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 you, you you'd only go on what the player gives you feedback wise and sometimes you get a, an unlucky setback so for example you might do a block tackle or you might get catch one on the end of your toe which is the situation here um, so he's on the way back from a, from a knee injury and someone strikes a ball and it catches him on the end of the toe and it's a bit of bad luck but it sets you back for a few more weeks and that's what's happened here so um, I think the important thing is the players desperate to get back and, and we need them back so the quicker that can happen the better for everyone. In terms of the mental aspect of that, how has he coped with that? I mean, it must be when you, you've been out for so long and it's so good to get back when you, you have another, you know, another couple of weeks it must be. Yeah, it's, it's, to, it's, the worst, yeah. it's the worst part of, of being a footballer, you know, when, the, when you're watching your teammates train on a daily basis and then you, you go into stadiums to watch them all perform and sometimes they get a big win and you don't feel part of it. Uh, sometimes they maybe suffer a setback and you feel like you're helpless and you can't help it. it it's the worst part of being a footballer, so I'm sure Graham's had some, some low days and some low moments, but he's been around the game for a long time, he's got enough experience. Um, I think the important thing is just to get himself healthy, um, and if it, that takes an extra week or an extra few days, he, he should really do that and come back fit and fighting because the midfield battle at the moment is fierce. Um, there's people pushing for, for places and we want Graham to be part of that but it's not going to be easy for him so it's important he comes back right and fit and healthy so he can push and challenge for that. Stephen, given the weekend results um, and, and the league standings, mm. how do you assess the significance of this competition and indeed tomorrow night's time now? We, we've always looked at this competition as something that we'd love to win. Um, it hasn't become any more important really because of the weekend's fixtures, although we respect the fact that the challenge in the league's got uh, more difficult over the weekend, but we can do nothing about the league until Hamilton at the weekend, so all the focus and all our energies um, and all our commitment needs to be on, on Kilmarnock. It's, uh, it's, it's always been uh, a huge competition for us. Um, it's, it's a big game that we want to qualify for. We'd love the chance to go to Pataudry and play a quarter-final against Aberdeen, but we, we have to try and take care of Kilmarnock first. And I know you've spoken about this subject matter before, but in light of the managing director's comments yesterday mm. about matches being re-refereed, mm. do you share that collective view that something has to happen quickly? I don't think um, we're putting a time scale on it or saying something has to happen fast. Um, I'm, I'm totally behind the managing director um, and the statement, but it, it's something that's come above me. You know, this has been obviously been going on for a longer time before I've come in. Um, the board are handling it, I trust them on it, and, and, and then we move forward like that. My focus now is just Kilmarnock tomorrow.